Hello, and welcome to Senior Living Live. I'm Janae Sherman, and I'm happy to see all of you here today with, for us, our webinar. Today, we're hosting a special webinar topic for a special group of people, our veterans. Our Senior Living Live for today is Understanding the VA Benefit for Senior Living, presented by Emily Schwartz, President of v Veterans Financial. Emily, it's great to see you again today. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm excited to be with Arbor Company again. This is an annual occurrence. It's wonderful. Yes, I really love presenting with you every year. So I'm going to get out of your way and let Emily present and answer all of your questions live. But before I give her the floor, I want to remind you that if you, if and when you have a question, please type it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen, and I'll be happy to read those to Emily after she's completed her presentation. So Emily, with all that, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Janae. I really appreciate it. So welcome, everybody, and happy almost Veterans Day. I like to call this Veterans Weekend as a part of Veterans Week. This is a really important time of the year to celebrate our veterans and their surviving spouses. So today I'm going to talk about the partnership that the Arbor Company and Elder Life Financial has and how we're able to support veterans in understanding about the aid and attendance benefit, which can help you pay for senior living. So let's take a look at today's agenda. First of all, we're gonna talk a little bit about who Elder Life is, and then we're gonna dive into that VA benefit for senior living. Within that, we're gonna talk about the monthly benefit amounts, and I'm gonna give you a sneak peek of what we anticipate the numbers are going to be for 2024. We're gonna talk about the four areas of eligibility, so you understand if you or a loved one might be able to receive this benefit. We're gonna talk about retroactive payments, which is why you need to start applying as soon as possible. And then we're going to talk about the challenges of this benefit and how Elder Life can help you and your family. Finally, I'll talk about a few additional resources that Elder Life does offer and hone in on the Elder Life Bridge Loan. After that, I'm going to give you some ways to connect with us so you will know how to get your questions answered um, if you don't want to ask them in the chat box. And then I'm also going to stay on for questions and see what you might want to know about. With that, let's just give you an overview of who Elder Life is and how I come to you today. So Elder Life partners with Arbor Company, and our goal is to be the financial aid office for senior living. We want to help senior living residents, prospective residents, and their families understand about a multitude of resources that can help you pay for the community that you're looking to move into or that you currently live at. Today, of course, we're gonna focus on VA benefits, which is a huge piece of this puzzle. And we're gonna help you identify and coordinate everything that is going to be available to you. When you give Elder Life Financial a call, you will speak with a financial concierge, and that will be a free consultation going over all seven of the pieces in this puzzle. Again, I will give you that contact information at the end of this presentation. Today, we're gonna to talk a little bit more about how to help families understand the VA's aid and attendance eligibility. And we're also gonna talk about simplifying the aid and attendance application. And this is what we will do with your family on that first phone call with our financial concierge. So let's dive into the meat and potatoes of what you wanted to learn about today. You want to know about the aid and attendance pension benefit. Now, this is an amazing benefit. It's very underutilized and most families are not even aware of it until their senior living community tells them about it. Unfortunately, the VA and Medicare and Social Security doesn't promote this. So we're thrilled to be able to share this information with you. And we hope that you pass it on to somebody that you think can also benefit from this information. So in 2024, we are estimating these to be the maximum monthly benefit amounts. The reason I say estimating is the VA is actually going to announce them officially on December 1. The VA's fiscal year goes December 1 to November 30th. So I do know the 2023 dollar amounts, but if you haven't applied for this benefit yet, these are the dollars you're gonna see in your very first payment. So a surviving spouse is eligible for $1,478 a month. The surviving spouse is typically the single woman. Of course, it could be the single male. Then we have the single veteran. That single veteran is gonna get a nice round number this year of $2,300 which can pay for a significant amount of the senior living cost. And then we have two different married veteran amounts. 
Let's start with a higher dollar amount at the bottom of the chart, not just because it's such a large number at 2727, but because that's the one that actually happens more often if you're a married veteran. That is when the married veteran needs care and they're married. Now the spouse can also require care. The spouse can be healthy. The spouse can live at home. The spouse can move into Arbor Company. As long as the married veteran needs care and lives with Arbor, they're going to be eligible for $27.27 a month if they meet the criteria that we're going to go over in a few minutes. Now, if you're a married veteran and you are healthy, but your spouse needs care, what you might not realize is there are benefits available to help you pay for your spouse's care. And that married veteran amount next year is going to be $1,806. This just tipped over into the $1,800 range. These are very large dollars that can help you pay for senior living, and most people do not know about them. They are paid tax-free, so you get 100% of these dollars, and they are paid directly to the applicant. The applicant is the veteran while the veteran is alive, and their surviving spouse once the veteran is deceased. All of these dollar amounts are going to be based on eligibility and determined by the Department of Veterans Affairs once you send in your VA application. So today, as I promised, we are going to look at the four areas of eligibility. Here's what they are in a nutshell, and then we'll take a deep dive on each of them. Military service of the veteran, health of the applicant, net income after medical expenses, and family net worth. We need to look at all four of these, as does the VA, to determine whether or not you will be entitled to these funds. So the first criteria of the benefit. The first criteria is military service. And what you see on the screen are the four wartime periods that the VA considers for this benefit. In order to be eligible, you need to have served or your spouse needs to have served one day of active duty during a wartime period. These are the exact dates that Congress has determined are World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Gulf War. So in order to be eligible, you need one day of active duty during one of these four date ranges, and then you need a total of 90 active duty days. They don't have to be consecutive, they typically are, but you could have 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, and you only need one of those 90 days during a wartime period. Now, most veterans will have served all 90 days during wartime, but I have seen folks that have entered the Korean conflict on the very last day of the war and then continue to serve on. So that made those other days of active duty non-war time and that's okay because they have that one day of active duty service. Now this benefit is open to all branches of the service but I also like to remind those that are reservists, National Guard, Merchant Marines, they may too be eligible if they were called up to active duty. And the way you prove your active duty service is by sending your discharge papers, known as a DD-214, into the VA with your application. Now, we don't need that to have a conversation with you because you likely know generally when you served, but you need the exact dates and location to fill out the application, and the VA does want to see a copy of your discharge papers. Now, don't worry. If you don't have your discharge papers, my team can help you order them. They come from the National Archives, and it is possible to get them in about three to four weeks. Now, a surviving spouse to be able to apply on their husband needs to have been married to that veteran at the time of death. That means no divorce. And if you remarry a non-wartime veteran in a subsequent marriage, unfortunately, you can no longer go back and apply on the prior marriage. So surviving spouses are married to their veteran at the time of their death and then did not remarry a non-wartime veteran. You also want to show the VA that you have an honorable medical or general discharge. Again, that will be on your discharge papers, but typically that is not an issue. I do also want to point out quickly that for the Gulf War, you do need to have served 24 months of active duty. We are not seeing many Gulf War veterans moving into senior living yet. That will be in the future. And most people that did serve during the Gulf War, which started August 2nd, 1990, and we're waiting for the end date, which happened about a year ago, um, will have served 24 months. But again, that is the difference between it and the prior three war times that only need 90 days of active duty service. With that, let's take a look at the second criteria. The second criteria of the benefit is medical. The VA wants to know why are you medically eligible for this benefit? 
And what they're looking for is a three-page doctor form, physician form. It can be filled out by any doctor. So that could be your primary care physician, neurologist, even a nurse practitioner, VA doctor, although it does not have to be a VA doctor. That's often a misunderstanding. And what the VA is looking for is whether or not you need care with activities of daily living. So the six that the VA recognizes are bathing, dressing, toileting, feeding, transferring, ambulating. To be clear, feeding is not meal preparation. Feeding is actual feeding. But bathing and dressing is very simple. That's like a shower assist. So a shower assist from a caregiver at Arbor, they'll come to your room, they'll make sure you're safe getting in and out of your clothes, and then in and out of the shower. That's it. Once or twice a week, a little helping hand can ensure that you qualify for this benefit because you're getting help with two activities of daily living, bathing and dressing. Some other popular care needs might be transferring. That would be getting out of bed into a chair or a wheelchair. Ambulating could be getting from your room to the dining room. So these are all very simple care needs that families typically need when they move to a senior living community. I will say that medication management, meal, uh, meal preparation, housekeeping, transportation, those are called IADLs, instrumental activities of daily living. So they're not quite enough to qualify you for this. Um, we could certainly have a conversation about some new language the VA has incorporated into their forms about protected environment and keeping you from the hazards and dangers um, that maybe we could try to get someone that's only using IA, IADLs through um, to approval. But for this recording, I love to say it is activities of daily living that will qualify you. Now, if you have a diagnosis such as dementia or Alzheimer's. That means you have a cognitive impairment or your loved one has a cognitive impairment. That will also quite qualify you for this benefit. We did put a couple of other diagnoses in here that we see quite often that qualify folks, macular degeneration, Parkinson's disease. I had one yesterday, I questioned about a stroke. Yes, that would qualify. Typically those people that have a stroke or Parkinson's or macular need help with ADLs as well but you could just have a cognitive impairment and that alone would qualify you for the benefit. Again, just a three page medical form. The VA is not looking for a mountain of medical evidence in a manila folder. They typically understand that folks applying for this benefit do need aid and attendance from another person on a regular basis. Third criteria of the benefit is monthly income versus monthly care cost. Now here's where the VA looks at all incomes coming into the household husband and wife, even if only one person needs care, they look at all social securities, all pensions, any wages coming in, any rental income from properties, any interest in dividends from investments. However, they do let you deduct, subtract your care costs from your income, bringing your income down, which is what typically happens with families moving into senior living. So the care costs that they will allow you to claim are home care, assisted living, memory care, of course, Arbor Company, adult daycare, nursing home care, if you're paying out of pocket, not Medicare or health insurance paying for it or Medicaid, health insurance premiums and long-term care insurance premiums. Any money that's going out of pocket on a regular basis from the household can be subtracted from the income. And if you're spending all of your income on care, as the example at the top demonstrates, you would have be considered a net income of zero. The example that we're looking at first has a family with $2,600 of income and $4,000 worth of care costs. Now we're all smart and we know that this person is actually negative 1,400. They need to pull that money from somewhere, from savings, from their kids, or hopefully from the VA. That's gonna make up the difference. However, if you demonstrate that you are spending all of your income on care every month, the VA will then award you one of those four full benefit amounts, the 1478 to the 2727, as long as you meet all the criteria. Sometimes we have families that have high income. So it's a married couple, but maybe only one part of the couple needs care. So that's two social securities, two pensions, and the care costs remain the same at $4,000. So this family will actually have an extra $400, uh, sorry, $600 every month which the VA says is a positive net income. Sounds really great, but it's not. And here's why. If you look at the fine print below the uh, equation, it demonstrates that a married couple who could get 2727 
but has an extra $600, the VA will actually subtract that $600 from the full benefit, awarding them $21.27. Here's my advice. If you're gonna get a partial benefit and you're looking to move into Arbor Company, I would consider either getting extra ancillary services, so that means extra days of care. Maybe instead of a shower assist once a week, you get it twice a week. Instead of twice a week, get it three or four times a week. Get some additional care to improve your life, make your life e easier. Or instead of moving into a studio, you could move into a one bedroom. Or instead of a one bedroom, a two bedroom. If you increase your cost of care by $600 more, the VA is gonna give you $600 more. It's truly a win for you. You're gonna spend a little bit more, but the VA is gonna give it right back to you and you're gonna get either a nicer room or additional care or both. So I would recommend spending exactly what you have coming in to maximize the benefit. Last criteria of the benefit is assets. Not only does the VA ask about your incomes, it also asks, asks about your assets. Again, this is household assets. Even if it's a second marriage, even if you keep your dollars separate, even if you have a prenuptial agreement, the VA is gonna look at all accounts that can pay for Arbor Company. And they're gonna expect you to spend that first. So what are we talking about? Bank accounts, CDs, annuities, IRAs, 401ks, mutual funds, real estate other than your primary residence, which we'll touch on in a second, stocks and bonds. Anything you can sell or liquidate despite the cost, to pay for Arbor Company is an asset. Next year's asset limit, because this goes up as well, 3.2%, just like the benefit amounts did, same as Social Security. Ne next year's asset limit is just over $155,000. To be exact, 155,356. So if your assets are too high, we have some solutions for that. We don't want you to just disqualify yourself or jump off this webinar. We want to talk to you about that too, because you might be eligible in the future. But let's cover what assets are not considered first. So a home is not considered an asset as long as it remains a home. So your primary residence can have your spouse living in it. It could have your kids or your grandkids living in it. It could be vacant. It could be rented. Of course, that's rental income on the prior slide, but it doesn't matter. You cannot pay Arbor Company with a window or door. So as long as the home remains a home, is it, it is an exempt asset. Now I'm realistic here. And I know most families are gonna sell their home right before or shortly thereafter moving into senior living. So if you're gonna sell your home and that home proceeds plus any other monies you have pushes you above the 155 limit, we have a solution for that too. We don't want you to just go ahead and sell your house and make yourself ineligible. I will talk about that in a second as well. Just to finish this up, the other things that the VA does not consider our final expense policies. People know them as prepaid funerals or burial policies. You can't pay Arbor with that. Vehicles and personal property, can't pay Arbor with that. Those are not gonna be considered. So circling back to the situation, if your assets are too high or you're gonna sell your house and your assets are gonna be too high, we still want you to contact us. We have two referral partners, one that can help you with appropriate VA planning, I will warn you, there is a three-year look back on this benefit. So it's much more generous than Medicaid. Medicaid only allows you $2,000 and has a five-year look back. This benefit allows you $155,000, but it does have a three-year look back. So the sooner you do the appropriate VA planning, the better. We'd recommend you contact us and we'll make that a referral for you. Better to get this benefit in month 37 than never at all. And if your home sale is gonna be a problem, what we're gonna recommend is you speak with a VA accredited attorney, and we have a referral partner for that as well. You can simply move the home into an irrevocable trust, avoid the three-year look back, and become eligible for the benefit usually in a month or two after you do all that repositioning working with the attorney. With that, let's talk about those retroactive benefits. So you're all ready to apply now. I'm going to encourage you that you need to get your claim open by November 30th. November 30th is the last business day this month. Some months we lose a day or two because of weekends or holidays. This month we get every single day of November. If you open your claim because you're eligible, do not do this if you're over assets or you have a home that you need to move into a trust. If you are eligible in all four criteria, you can open your claim with either your entire 30 page application packet. Yes, I said 30 pages or a one page intent to file form. 
and then you'll go back and fill out the rest of the 30 pages. As long as your intent to file arrives to the VA by the last business day of the month by mail or fax, the VA will owe you money starting December 1. They always backdate payments to the first of the month after you open your claim. So one of the misunderstandings is families think that the VA will divide months in half based on the day that your paperwork shows up or based on the day you move into the community. Wrong. It's always the first of the following month. The VA does everything in month blocks. That means if you're a current resident or you're a prospective resident and you think you're moving in in December, you need to get a move on. You want to get that claim open by November 30th. Then when you're approved in three to four months, that's how long it usually takes our families, and that's an amazing turnaround time, the VA will owe you four months of money back. So whatever dollar amount you're entitled to, 1478, 2300, 2727, the VA will multiply that by four and make a deposit for that money. It'll probably come in March or April, and you can use it to replenish your savings account, or if you're working with Elder Life for a VA bridge loan, you can repay your bridge loan with those funds. So let's talk about the challenges and how we help with that. So the first challenge, which you've already understood, is how do you determine if you are eligible? There are four criteria. I am sure you have lots of questions about each of them, and that's what our team will do with you live. We will talk about your specific situation and go through all of the questions necessary to determine whether you meet the four criteria. The other problem you're gonna have with this benefit which you may have identified, is you need to be spending money on care. Well, if you can't, don't have the funds to spend on care, but you need to show the VA you're spending money on care, that is a catch-22, and that can be a problem that Elder Life is going to assist you with. Finally, it is a 30-page application if you do it by pen and paper. It's comprised of four different VA forms in order to get this benefit. We have a solution for that as well. So here's how we help. If you connect with us, and I'm going to give you an email and a phone number at the end in just a few minutes, we have an in-house VA benefits team. Our financial concierge will warm transfer you right over to 10 wonderful people that all they do is talk about VA benefits 40 hours a week. So they can walk you through those four criteria that I just did very quickly in whatever time frame you need. If you don't have all the information in call one, there can always be call two, three, and four till we figure out whether you're eligible. If you are eligible, and about 80% of our families are, we have some options on how to fill out the application. As I mentioned, it is 30 pages, and we can certainly give you that PDF to print out and do by pen and paper. Um, however, I would recommend you use our online application. It's similar to any tax preparation software. What might uh, ring a bell for you is TurboTax, for example. If you've ever done your taxes online, which is how most people do it, most people don't do their taxes by pen and paper, this will walk you through 10 tabs of information so that you can answer the questions in a manner that you understand, and it will ensure that you do not miss any boxes that the VA is looking for. It will make sure everything gets added up right. It ensures that you put in all the right military dates. Basically, it is going to human-proof the VA application. That is how our VA applications are awarded, typically in three to four months, because when they go in, they don't have any mistakes. So you will fill out all 30 pages of information, which is 10 tabs. You print it out. Your veteran or surviving spouse will sign it a few times. The doctor will sign it or the nurse practitioner and the community will sign it. Then you will take that with all of your uh, supporting documents and you will mail or fax it to the VA for that December 1 retroactive benefits. Now, we do charge to use our online application. It is $299 for our basic package and it is $599 for our premium package. Our premium package comes with human support and 80% of our families do select that option. We can help with data entry, reviewing the application, especially if you have a complex situation. We have a premium customer phone line. We will help you understand your documents, such as your discharge papers. We'll even fax it for you if you need that assistance. So we have a $299 and a $599 package, but to be clear, we will talk with any family about their eligibility for nothing. We have a partnership with Arbor Company and we are thrilled to be able to discuss VA eligibility to every veteran and surviving spouse that wants to learn about this benefit. Finally, I've mentioned the bridge loan a couple of times. I'm gonna elaborate a little bit about that. As I said, you have to be spending money on care in order to be able to fill out the application correctly. You have to tell the VA 
who your care provider is and what part of your income you're spending on it. So if you don't have the funds to do that and wait out three, four, five months, Elder Life can provide you a VA bridge loan. That means we will provide money to your community on your behalf in the amount of your VA benefit. So it'll feel as if you've already been awarded. So we can pay Arbor Company 1478 or 2300 or 2727 while you're waiting for the VA to approve you. And then you remember those retroactive benefits. The great news is you're gonna get a large check and that large check is gonna help you repay the bridge loan. Essentially what the bridge loan does for families is we help bridge the gap between the time the senior needs the care and the time the senior can afford the care. We also do bridge loans for home sales as well. I know that's not the topic for today, but 75% of our bridge loans are actually done for home sales. So let's talk a little bit about that. We can help you move in immediately before the VA application is submitted or before the home is listed on the market. We're gonna provide money to Arbor Company. We're gonna help you make good decisions. We help you maximize the value of your home. We don't want you to have your children um, have to make contributions. We very easily can do that bridge loan application over the phone. It's about 15 or 20 minutes of your time. We are more than happy to take that application over the phone, although you can do it on our website if you'd like. We're going to call you anyway, but we were more than happy to take that application over the phone live with a financial concierge. It's a very easy application. We're not asking for any documents unless we're going to move forward with that loan. If we do open that bridge loan for you, we will send funds to your community in as little as 24 hours. Um, we will add in additional funds for moving expenses and home repairs. So if you need that to get top dollar for your house, and that really is our goal, we want you to have time to list that house in the best shape. And we want you to wait for that great offer. We don't want you to rush a home sale. Just like with VA benefits, we want to give you time to get moved into the community and then fill out the application. So we do give people money before either of those events have happened. We also roll in money for an initial community fee. So if you um, do have a community fee that you owe Arbor Company or any senior living community, we can add that into the bridge loan as well on top of the monthly rent and care to make it easier for you to move in. So some additional resources that we have on top of the bridge loan. Remember, I told you you're going to talk with a financial concierge which is like a financial aid office at a senior living community. So we've talked a lot about VA benefits, and I know we are the most time efficient and cost effective way to apply for the benefit. We also help families understand how to sell their life insurance. So sometimes people have life insurance and they can no longer afford the life insurance and the senior living community, or they just need that chunk of funds to be able to get moved in. Well, you could monetize your life insurance. If your policy is more than $50,000, you can actually sell it on the open market and you traditionally get about 60% of the face value. That can give you a lot of funds that can help you afford senior living. We talk about the tax deductibility of senior living. Assisted living and memory care are tax deductible and we would definitely recommend you speak with your tax preparer about that. So we give you documentation that you can take to them. So as we roll into doing our taxes in the first quarter of 2024, any current residents that have been spending money on care this year can deduct that from your taxes. And you can actually go back and amend three years of tax returns if you want to do that. We, we talked a little bit about bridge loans, so let's keep going around the heart. Another big thing that we do is reverse mortgages. So if you are moving into the community, but your spouse is remaining at home, you're not going to want to sell your house right now. And maybe you need some equity from the value of your home to pay for Arbor Company. We have a partner that can help you with reverse mortgages and understand that option. If you have a long-term care insurance policy and you planned way in advance for this time of your life, that's excellent. We have a partner that can help you understand your policy, the who, what, and when of how that policy pays out. Um, very important to know if it's going to cover Arbor and how much. And then we, that partner can even help you initialize the claim, manage the claim, do the monthly submittals, taking that completely off of your family's plate. And we really recommend just making that a lot easier for yourselves. Lastly, I think I mentioned that homes are, people big, are people's biggest assets and usually how people plan to pay for care. Sometimes people have VA and a home, which is wonderful. We have a national network of senior real estate specialists to help families maximize that biggest asset. 
we don't want you to lose one single dollar when you're selling that home. Our senior real estate specialists know how to get you that extra twenty-five, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars for your home, which will help you live in the community for an extra year or two, which is obviously what you'd like. With that, here are some ways to learn more. Um, you can either email us immediately, obviously, or you're all tech savvy. So you can hop on your email right now and you can send a message to Arbor Company at elderlifefinancial.com. Again, Arbor Company at elderlifefinancial.com. We just need your name and your phone number. We'll already have your email because you'll be sending us the message. Maybe give us a little bit about your story. Tell us what you need assistance with. And we will reach out to you typically in an hour or two. You can also call in immediately as soon as we're finished with this webinar. We have wonderful financial concierges ready to answer your phone call, 888-228-4500, 888-228-4500. If you're watching this recording, evenings and weekends, we are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Central Time, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. So I would recommend evenings and weekends, you send us an email and we will get back to you on the next business day. If you want to go on the computer, which you already are on, you can go to www.elderlifefinancial.com, www.elderlifefinancial.com, do a little more exploration about how we help families with VA benefits and a multitude of other things. There's even a bridge loan application form right there on our website. And with that, I want to wish everybody a very happy Veterans Day, which is tomorrow, but we're going to make it one day early. I see there's a couple of questions, so I'm sure Janae's going to pop on and read them to me. Yes. Thank you, Emily. This is always such a great presentation. And I know that you already said the best way is for someone to contact you so you and your team can answer their specific questions. But while we have you here live, I do want to ask you a couple of things that some of our viewers have sent in. And if you are watching and you still have a question, we'll see if we can get that one answered. We have a few more minutes to go. So make sure you get those in so that we can ask Emily live. So the first question is around the qualifications. Um, you mentioned the wartime um, to be eligible. So if you didn't serve during wartime, does that make you ineligible? Unfortunately, it does for this benefit. There's a lot of wonderful VA benefits, but this benefit requires wartime service. And I'm so glad you asked that question because I realized I forgot to say one thing about that. Oftentimes, people think they have to be in the combat zone. Now, you do not have to be in the combat zone. You just need to have served one day of active duty during wartime, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Gulf War, but you could be anywhere in the entire world. Go, um, you could be in the U.S., you could be in another country, um, you do not have to be in the front lines, and that's what people often think. But yes, you need that one day of active duty service and a total of 90 active duty days. Okay, thank you. I think that clears that one up. We do have another question in here. What So what happens when the veteran or surviving spouse goes on to Medicaid? So if you move on to Medicaid, let me, let me start this sentence differently. Medicaid is different in every single state. So this benefit is a federal program. That's why it makes it very easy for me to give you this presentation and talk to everybody in the United States. Medicaid is a state-by-state -state program. So you really are going to want to ask your state Medicaid how aid and attendance income interacts with your Medicaid benefits. The reason I say that is depending on the state, Medicaid can view the income that you've been receiving from aid and attendance in different ways. Sometimes they will count a portion of it. Sometimes they will count all of it. And so I say that as a warning. If you are transitioning to Medicaid in the near future, this might not be the best avenue for you. However, if it is completely fine with your state's Medicaid, you can be on aid and attendance. And then when you go on Medicaid, which means you're no longer paying for care because Medicaid is, they will reduce your benefit to $97 a month. So if you're a family that's maybe on Medicaid already, you can fill out this application and the VA will give you $97 tax-free that's over $1,100 a year to use up for some of your incidentals. But I want to just give the disclaimer and warning that you want to talk with your state's Medicaid department or expert about how aid and attendance income now or in the past affects your future Medicaid. 
Okay, thank you. I think that answers that question. If you have a follow up, make sure to drop it in. Um, okay, so this next one is a two part and I can even answer the first one is part of it is do you only work with Arbor? And that is not the case. You work with any any veteran or their surviving spouse. So anyone is free to use this information on the screen to contact Emily and her team. The other part, can both the husband and wife get aid and attendance at the same time? I suppose if they're both veterans, what, maybe you can answer that one for us. That's a good guess. So if they're both veterans, they can both make their own application. I wish that meant they got 27, 27 times two. That is not correct. Honestly, I don't remember the exact dollar amount for next year, but it's somewhere in the 3,500. So you will get more if you have two veterans married to each other and they both need and are paying for care at the same time. The reason I don't promote that is that's a lot of if, if, if. That does not typically happen. So what usually when people are asking this question is they're hoping that they can get their surviving spouse benefit and the married veteran benefit. Unfortunately not. A family, a household gets one benefit, whatever the highest one is. So that would be the married veteran benefit, one of the two married veteran benefits. Surviving spouse really truly means when the veteran is deceased, not just spouse. Got it. I think that clears that up. Thank you. So then le the next question, if you're a surviving spouse and have investments, is there anything that can be done to meet the net worth requirement? I feel like you're probably going to have to deal with these kind of questions on their own, but maybe there's something you can say to answer this one in general. Yeah. So I would say if you are fortunate and you have some savings, whether you're a veteran or a spouse or a married veteran, I would recommend you reach out to us and we have referral partners that can help you solve that problem. Um, the problem will probably not be solved today because you are over the $155,000 asset limit, but you can do gifting, you can do asset transfer. However, the VA is gonna ask about that on the application. And that's that three-year look back that I was talking about, which is why it, the sooner you start thinking about this, the better. It's similar to Medicaid. Many people know Medicaid as a five-year look back. VA only has a three-year look back, so it's much more generous. But if you want to get this benefit in month 37, you want to start month one being this month, and then you'll be eligible in three years. Occasionally, it can be a little bit less, but I would say as a rule, people are waiting three years if they're over the asset limit. Okay, well, thank you. It seems that we don't have any more questions right now. I'll give everyone a moment while I'm wrapping up. So if you have one more, you better rush in here and get it. But thank you so much for being with us today. It's always so clear because you take something that can be a very difficult or frustrating process. And it sounds like you and your team just wrap that up for us and make it much more easy to understand. So I really appreciate that. I know our viewers probably do as well. So make sure if you have any more questions for Emily or her team, you see the information on the screen. This is the way that you can reach out to her. Um, Oh, we just got one that popped up, the average cost of your service. I do remember you t mentioning some of your packages before. Yeah. So um, if you want to, if you yeah, want to. Yeah, absolutely. So it's absolutely free to call Elder Life. Um, we are more than happy to talk with anybody, as Janae said, about their VA benefits, about ways to pay for senior living. That's what we do. We're the financial aid office for senior living. If you want to use our online application, and we can talk about this with you when you're on the phone. We have a basic package, which allows you or your loved one access to the VA online application, which goes through very quickly. It's $299, so just about $300. And then we have a premium package for $599, which comes with human support, which people love, um, just in case they need help reviewing their application, data entry, answering a million questions, getting their documents looked at, um, $599. Okay, thank you. We did get another one, and I think you might have touched on this one, but just to make sure it's clear, is the amount awarded in the benefit the same depending on whether you're at home or in a senior living community? Um, I believe you talked mm -hmm. about how whether that was based on care or not. So if you wanted to just clear that. I think that the question is, does this benefit work for home care? It does work for home care. The VA is going to look at how much of your income you're spending on care. So when people move into senior living, they're typically spending more than their income. But the good news is they don't have any other bills. 
So all of your rent, you don't have a mortgage anymore, your utilities, your foods, all covered. So typically with senior living, you're spending more than your income. When you're living at home with home care, you typically reserve some of your income to pay for those things like your mortgage and your utilities and food. Now, unfortunately, the VA doesn't count those as care costs. So the only thing they let you reduce your income with is the home care cost and your health insurance. So a lot of times when you are using home care, you don't get the full benefit because you're like the bottom example. When I had the two different examples, you have positive net income and the VA subtracts it from your benefit. So the short answer is yes, this works for home care. Many times home care recipients end up with partial benefits, but you can give us a call. We are still happy to talk with you and walk you through what amount we think you're entitled to with your current financial situation. Oh, I'm glad that that, that was a good question. So that, um, and then it seems we have a follow-up to that one is the aid and attendance on top of spousal payments. I'm not sure exactly what you mean by spousal payments. So I'm going to take some guesses and then you can call in and my team can walk you through what you have. So sometimes spouses are getting um, part of their better, their deceased husband's pension. So if it's career military, sometimes they're getting uh, DIC, dependency and indemnity compensation, which is based on your husband's um, injuries, their disability compensation. Um, and so the answer is different depending on what you mean by spousal. I can't remember the word used exactly. DIC, if you're getting that, which might be what you're talking about, you can get a little bit more for aid and attendance. Blanking on the number right now, I think it's about $300 more. They'll give you a little step up. Um, if you're getting a career military pension, the VA will allow you to add this on top of it. So it really depends on what you're getting those monies from and for. Yes, Emily, she followed up with DIC. It does sound mm -hmm. like she'll. Yeah. So it's DIC and DIC is for those that are not aware is um, your husband would have 100% disability compensation because they were injured during their line of duty. And then if they were getting that disability money for 10 years before passing, the spouse is entitled to about one third of it. So yes, if you have DIC, you can reach out to us or you really could reach out to the VA. It's just a few pages of paperwork. You don't need an online platform to do it. Um, you'll show the VA that you now yourself have care needs and the VA will give you about $300 more. Well, that sounds great. These were great questions. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Emily, for being here with us to make sure that we understand. Remember, you can always reach out. You will be receiving a, a link to this recorded webinar, to the email that you registered with very shortly. So you'll have all of this information uh, conveniently for you. And if you enjoyed this webinar, you should also visit our website, www.seniorlivinglive.com, where we have many great webinar recordings on all of the topics you're looking for. We have a few more with Emily, so you want to make sure to check it out. And there's lots about health, wellness, and all the different types of, of senior living topics and senior care. So make sure to look at that. All of our videos are free, so just check those out at your convenience. So thank you again so much for being a part of Senior Living Live today. To all of our veterans and family viewers today, I want to just thank you for your service. And Emily, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. It's always wonderful to be with Arbor. So everyone have a wonderful weekend and thanks for your time. Yes, thank you. Have a great day, everyone.